Hello and welcome to the Walk the Walk Table and Talk. This is our outreach and tabling training, which will hopefully give you everything you need to be an informed and confident activist in your tabling experience. Thank you so much for being an activist and for bringing your skills and passion to table with us. We're genuinely so excited to have you as a part of the team. And the uh, following items that you see here on the screen are what we're gonna be covering in this quick training. We will be sharing these slides afterwards so you have the means to click through links and follow along at the same time. So uh, with that, let us get started. Uh, I am Chelsea Alexander. I work as the Movement Building and Volunteer Director at 350 Colorado. Uh, really love getting to do this work and helping build the movement and working with all the awesome teammates here today to make it happen. So I will go ahead and get things started uh, with what is tabling, passing it along to Matt. Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Ghost. I am the 350 Roaring Fork team coordinator. Uh, and yeah, I'm here to kind of talk to you on a surface level as to what tabling is. Um, so tabling is interfacing with people in a non-confrontational way to give them information about our groups and causes. Uh, this can be done at farmers markets, co-sponsored events with businesses, partnered events with other nonprofits, festivals. The list is really endless. Um, a crucial way to grow the climate movement at a local level uh, is really what we're trying to like, yeah, move forward here. Um, it's creating meaningful connections, which are really the backbone of what we are as an organization as a grassroots movement. Uh, and with that, you got to get to know your local community a little better, uh, build connections, and really just, yeah, figure out who you have in your local community. Um, it's great for building in-person connections. And at the end of the day, it is all about the ask. So I will pass it over to Justin to talk to you a little more about the goals and why we do it. All right, thanks, Matt. Hey, everybody, my name is Justin Cole. I'm the 350 Colorado Springs team coordinator. Uh, here, we're gonna talk a little bit about the goals and why we do it. So let's let's ask a question. Uh, what is the purpose of tabling? So it's, it's fundamentally to grow the climate movement and support campaigns. Uh, we want to spread our mission and our message to people who might not otherwise have had the opportunity to get to know us. There are a lot of people who are motivated around climate and environmental issues, but they just haven't heard the magic number 350 yet. Um, we also want to use these opportunities to receive donations, point people towards our email list and our social media, sign petitions, uh, distribute our literature and flyers and stickers and other swag. Um, but there's there's one thing that is really important to this as well. It's having an ask and making it to the public. So what is an ask? Uh, it is something that a person just passing by the table can get involved in right then and there. Something like a petition or, uh, you know, even if it's just something like helping out with an art build or something. Uh, kind of a quick anecdote. I had my first tabling opportunity with 350 before I became a team coordinator. It was at this film festival. And I remember having all these people, you know, come across the table and express interest in our mission. And I loved getting to talk to people about, you know, the event and their passions about the, the environment. And, uh, you know, I loved pointing them towards our social media, but I never got them involved in any kind of action then and there. And that was a huge missed opportunity. So just always remember, have an ask when you come into these opportunities. So next, Vic is going to talk to us about how you table an event. Awesome. Thanks so much, Justin. Thank you all for being here today, too. I know that tabling for the first time can really seem daunting and talking to people, maybe at an event you've never been to, people you've never met before can seem a little scary. But I think that a lot of these how to's um, and tricks and tips you'll hear from other staff members are going to take a lot of the mystery out of it, and make you a more confident activist. Um, if you ever are at a tabling event and have a question um, about any anything, especially on the more technical side that I'm going to go over, feel free to rely on a staff member or a more experienced volunteer who's tabled before um, for your first tabling event. They'll be able to help you out. 
Um, so when you're tabling, you may be handling money or transactions. Um, each of our local teams have what we call like swag or materials that they have for sale or for donation. Um, usually those include t-shirts and bags and the prices of those items vary depending on the local team, but your local team coordinator should be able to supply you um, with that price information. Um, when people are interested in purchasing any of these swag items, we can accept payments in the following ways. And those are cash, Venmo, and PayPal. Your local team coordinator should also be able to provide you with QR codes to all of those 350 accounts. Something I like to tell our volunteers and um, members who are tabling with us is to make sure when somebody does Venmo us or PayPal us to put the local team's name um, in the subject or notes line um, of the payment, just so we can make sure that that money is allocated to the correct team. Um, and if you do receive cash while you're tabling, just be sure to store that cash away um, from a payment or a donation in a safe place. Um, and when packing up at the end of the day, either let a staff member um, or the person who's taking the supplies home with them know where that staff, or excuse me, where that cash is, so they should be able to find it. Um, using the supplies that you're given, which may include tables, swag, and materials, um, other items that Sarah will go over later, um, make sure that you allow 15 to 30 minutes before the event starts to set up your tabling space and make sure you feel comfortable um, and ready to go before the events. The table and materials can may be set up according to however you see fit, unless your local team coordinator provides you with a photo of the setup before, and then you can just follow um, set up from the photo. Um, similarly, the breakdown process should only take about 15 to 30 minutes after the event ends, so please plan accordingly. Once the supplies are broken down, um, make sure that they go home with the person who is designated before the event started to take the supplies home with them. Um, if there's a staff member present, more than likely they'll be the one taking it. Otherwise, um, either staff member or a volunteer member who's tabled before should know who they're going home with. Um, and with that, I will pass it on to Sarah. Thanks, Vic. Um, Vic is the incredible Denver team coordinator. Um, and I'm Sarah. I am the NOCO or Northern Colorado team coordinator. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the materials and the prep for tabling. Um, so just on a personal level, what you're going to need for the day. Um, we suggest wearing a 350 Colorado shirt just so people know right off the bat who you are and what you're doing. Um, and then a lot of our tabling opportunities are outside. So we do suggest having um jacket or layers because as all of you probably know, Colorado weather is super crazy and unpredictable. So it can be sunny one second and snowing the next. So you just want to be prepared for whatever weather you're going to see that day. Um, also, it's, if it's outside, we do recommend bringing sunscreen, hats, sunglasses, that sort of thing. Um, we're not always guaranteed shade, so it's a good idea to protect yourself from the sun. And um, also, it can be a long day. Um, we suggest bringing a water bottle and a snack. Um, hydration is obviously super important, and you might get a little snacky. Obviously, you don't want to chow down on like a full meal at the table, but I like to have a little like, granola bar or trail mix or something to snack on if I end up needing it. And um, it's totally optional, but you can bring a folding chair if it would make you feel more comfortable. During tabling, we wanna kind of be standing up and moving around to be a little more active and engaging. But if you know yourself and feel like you might need to take a seat at a certain point, that's totally fine. Um, so for the supplies for tabling itself, I think one of the most important, important supplies is having a table for tabling. Um, so make sure you have one. Every team has their own table, um, but sometimes the table is provided by the event. So just make sure you know that beforehand. Um, and then a tablecloth just makes it look a little nicer. Um, then we have those big signs like you can see in the picture, just so people know kind of what we're doing before they come up to our table. Um, you should also have all your informational materials. This can include your flyers, pamphlets, um, different QR codes, sign up sheets, um, and petitions, just kind of whatever campaign you're running, you want people to be able to know about it and maybe take something about it. Um, and then pens for the sign up sheets, always a great idea. Um, you should probably have a money bag to collect donations. Um, and then you'll have your swag, like Vic said, 
um, your shirts, your totes, your stickers. Um, and it's important to just keep track of what you came with, what you sold, the money you made, et cetera. Um, and then it's always a good idea to have um, scissors and tape just in case you need it. You might not need it, but it's good to have just in case. Um, and then for the prep before the event, you should read over the confirmation email that you should have gotten just to make sure you know what time it is, what's going on, who you'll be working with. Um, and then get the materials from your coordinator if they're not going to be there. Arrange a time to get those to make sure you have everything you're going to need. Um, and then just make sure you have the contact information, um, like your team coordinator's phone number, so that you can call or text if something happens. You probably already have their email, but it's a good idea to have their phone number so you're not trying to send a panicked email if you have a question. Um, and that's all I have for you. I'm going to pass it to Justin for a little bit about safety. Hey, thanks, Sarah. All right, everybody, let's talk about safety. Uh, so one of the biggest things that we want to consider in the planning process for a tabling event is planning for the unexpected. So first off, we want to be prepared for any possible emergencies that could happen. Uh, before you table, make sure that you share emergency contact information with, uh, you know, I, your team coordinator, uh, with, uh, you know, the other people that you're tabling with. Make sure you have their info in case you need to contact any of them. Let somebody, you know, a family member, a roommate, something like that, know where you're going to be as well in case anything happens, just so that they're tracking. Also, Familiarize yourself with CPR as a general technique. It's good to kind of, good to kind of have in the back pocket uh, in case somebody has some kind of cardiac event. Also, look for an AED. It's one of those uh, electric defibr defibrillators that's you know often in a box on a wall um, or being carried by emergency personnel. Uh, those have instructions inside of them that tell you how to use them, but also very important for if anybody suffers a cardiac event. Also, fire extinguishers. Uh, if you're tabling an inside event, make sure that you know, uh, you know, where you can find a fire extinguisher, how to use one, and finally, if there is something like a fire or any other kind of emergency that requires evacuation, you generally understand how to get out of the building in, in a safe way, and get yourself to safety. Also, in your tabling kit, it's generally good practice to include a first aid kit, and it's good to have a number of things in there, too. So personally, I like keeping like, uh, you know, not just bandages and gauze and neosporin, but also things for insect bites, things for people who are having mild allergic reactions, uh, NyQuil and DayQuil if somebody's got the sniffles. It's, it's good to stay prepared. So next, let's talk about your surroundings. You want to never really leave the table unattended. Always have somebody there. This is also from an optics perspective. We want to make sure that when people see our table, there's actually somebody attending it. Um, next, uh, we've spoken to this a little bit, but uh, keep an eye on the weather and pack for it. So if it's supposed to be really sunny, bring some sunscreen, bring appropriate clothing. If it's supposed to be raining, snowing, same thing. Um, also, if possible, and especially if it's outside, scout the area in advance. Uh, at the very least, check it out on Google Maps. If you're tabling inside, maybe see if you can get inside the building and just kind of see where you're going to be and explore the space. Also, uh, during the event or, or prior to the event even, also try and introduce yourself to somebody running the event, uh, whether that's one of the organizers or maybe if it's a larger event, you know, introduce yourself to security, get to know, uh, you know, the other people who are uh, tabling the event as well. These are great networking events between organizations. Now, personally, again, can't emphasize this enough, stay hydrated and pack snacks. We don't want you to become a heat casualty or a dehydration casualty. Um, also, maintain general situational awareness. Uh, there are people who might have some disagreements with our mission, and that's okay. But uh, you know, every now and then, there's there's a mild risk that somebody might not be you know uh, wishing all of us well. So keep an eye out for anybody who might be exhibiting those behaviors. And then as far as valuables, whether that's cash boxes or your personal valuables, either keep them on you or stow them away. Keep those things you know close by if you can. So next up, Matt is going to go ahead and tell us about some troubleshooting. Hi, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Um, I just wanted to preface this section by saying that these things don't happen, happen often, but when they do happen, it's best to be prepared to know how to handle them. Uh, so yeah, there are three different main things I'm going to cover here. Difficult conversations, difficult people, and unexpected changes. Uh, difficult conversations that you might have with certain people could be com combative or aggressive. 
Sometimes people are looking for a conflict or an argument. And the most important theme here that you're going to realize is to not engage with those people, to diffuse these situations with people, and to sometimes refer them to your local team coordinator or senior uh, volunteer or LC member, if that's the case. Um, with that, I'll kind of give a bit of an example. Uh, I remember we were having a protest out in Glement Springs, uh, maybe two or three months ago. Uh, it's the one instance I've ever had with somebody being disruptive. Uh, there was somebody there with a big old sign saying, you know, climate woke is a joke and, and shaking a bell and, and, and just, you know, protesting in his own right on the other side of the street. Uh, eventually, one of our members uh, went over there and, you know, kind of got into a bit of a scuffle with the guy. Um, upon realizing this, I, I knew that that is not something that we wanted to see happen. I went over there to diffuse the situation and calm everybody down and had to explain to, you know, our people as well. But while they have just as much of a right to be there as we do uh, in a lot of these circumstances, we can't engage with those kind of people. Uh, they are over there causing a ruckus, whatever it is, genuinely kind, generally just kindly ask them to stop or to, you know, maybe try to be less argumentative about these situations. Uh, a lot of the time too, um, with these passive responses you can get, uh, just try to gauge them as best as you can uh, and remind them that every action matters. Uh, sometimes people can be kind of, you know, sad about the situation or think that their impact doesn't matter. Um, just kind of trying to encourage them sometimes also can do you a lot of good. Uh, moving forward onto difficult people, um, there's climate deniers and minimalizers. Uh, a lot of the time you want to realize where you're allocating your energy. Um, and sometimes finding a separate time to talk with them further or to realize that, you know, maybe my efforts are going to be better uh, focused on other people that I could, you know, bring into our group that, you know, want to support the cause instead of using a larger amount of energy to try to convince somebody of something that they may not fully grasp yet. Um, moving down into disruptors, uh, as I mentioned earlier with the, the example I had, um, most of the time what you're going to want to do in these circumstances is contact your uh, local team coordinator. Um, that should be on site or nearby, or just the most senior person there at the event, whether that's a leadership council member or a more senior volunteer. Um, moving down into unexpected changes, sometimes, you know, things come up. We have very busy lives, and occasionally you might not be able to attend an event that you would prior, like, prior committed to. In those kind of circumstances, try to give your coordinator as much of a, a time leeway as possible to let them know that you're not going to be there, whether that's via text or via call, uh, just to let them know that, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it so we can hopefully find you a replacement. Uh, and with these unexpected changes, sometimes you're going to be outside and it's Colorado. Uh, the weather could come flying in uh, with, a, with a storm or a blizzard or anything along those lines. Uh, in those kind of circumstances, know to pivot. Uh, make sure that you've got your your gear and whatnot, like Sarah mentioned earlier. And uh, yeah, just try to be prepared to the best of your ability. Um, but with that, I will pass it over to Chelsea for some more tips. Awesome, thank you, Matt. Yes, um, as Vic said earlier, we know tabling the first or second time can be hard and challenging, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the more that we have all done it, um, we have come up with some tips. This is not an exhaustive list that you have here in front of you. Um, in fact, we have a lot of other great resources to point you to, to learn how to handle kind of curveballs and um, how to make the experience as effective and fun as possible. But um, just for these points here, you know, it's a, as uh, Sarah said earlier too, that this tabling is really not a passive activity, it's more active. So consider using the table more as a base and not so much a barricade. Try to stay beside it, in front of it, move around it. Um, when you really are paying attention to your body language and coming off as open and engaging, you're going to get more people to come to you. And a lot of teams do have name tag supplies. And oftentimes when you're wearing one and even introduce yourself in those situations that make sense and you're comfortable, it can really drive home the impact of good tabling, good movement building. Um, so consider that in your, your tabling time. Um, you know, we've also shared about how having a kind of good short opening uh, question or message to get the attention of people coming by is really important. And if something doesn't work, you know, adapt, try something else, uh, see what else could really pull people in. This picture here, you see that there is a prize wheel over in the corner. And um, when I was tabling this evening at this event, it really made the difference to have people just come over pretty naturally. Um, there's trivia questions that they could answer and you could have different conversations, spark points take off from that. 
and um, yeah, it brings kids and adults alike. So uh, having something to say, spin the trivia wheel, get a prize uh, could really bring people by. And as cliche as it sounds, you know, smiling at everyone and having a pleasant demeanor is so important. Um, you know, not making any assumptions about who will or won't respond is really just, uh, critical for good tabling. And yeah, for further talking points and you know, frequently asked questions that we get, those are um, embedded within the tabling and outreach guidelines, which you have either already looked at or are looking at or will be looking at. Uh, really will build off of what you're learning here today. So as you table more and you find what works and what doesn't, let us know. We love building out our tip list and understanding, um, yeah, strategy. So we would love to hear from you of anything that comes up that you think is effective in your tabling. And with that, I will pass it back to Matt. Thanks, Chelsea. So yeah, I'm here to talk a little more about the expectations that we have, expectations that you should have, and respect as a whole when we're tabling at these events. Um, so what you should expect from us in this activist experience uh, is to receive information and support so that you feel prepared and confident to table at these events. Uh, most times, if you're pushing for a certain initiative or one of our campaigns, uh, yeah, you'll have at least some sort of, you know, background material on that that your local team coordinator should have provided you. Uh, you should feel free to also, you know, do a little bit of your own research on these kind of topics as well. It's a very, they're very wide in a lot of these circumstances. Uh, and you want to be able to be able to answer some questions that people do direct your way. Um, you want to be able to also make real connections with the people that you're talking to in this community and grow the climate movement as a whole. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are a grassroots movement, meaning that we are just coming from the ground up with people that we're meeting at these different surface levels that come in as volunteers. And we all kind of work together to kind of try to grow out and up in a way that, yeah, educates more people and gets more people on board and creates a supportive community for these uh, environmental initiatives. Um, and thirdly there, we would want you to have fun. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of these tabling events are a great op are great opportunities to, you know, meet awesome people in your community. Uh, there's this great example that I love to mention. Um, I was tabling at the Carbondale Farmer's Market a couple of weeks ago, and this guy comes up to me with this crazy, awesome idea of uh, using a lake as a battery. And you might be thinking to yourself, using a lake as a battery, what does that mean? Uh, but harnessing solar energy is his idea here to pump water up into an elevated lake, like Lake Mead, for example, be able to store that water at a higher level, uh, and then run the water down from Lake Mead through a turbine uh, to be able to create hydroelectric power. Um, while there's obviously a drop off uh, with how much uh, energy you're gonna be able to pull from that, there's a little bit lost. Um, every battery has a little bit of a lost energy when it's being stored. And it's kind of cool that you can kind of have these different ideas and different perspectives. And, you know, I've had people come up to me and, you know, they're very concerned about, you know, beaver populations and things like that. And you just run into so many unique people from different walks of life that have different climate uh, initiatives that they care about. Um, and to be able to talk to them and, and really understand what they've got going on is one of the most rewarding parts of tabling. Um, moving down uh, as to what we expect from you, uh, we want you to activate interested people and not necessarily convert uninterested ones. Um, like I mentioned a little earlier, sometimes your energy is best allocated uh, on people that are, you know, already kind of on board with the climate crisis and understand that it's an issue and want to, you know, help and move forward as opposed to convincing people uh, that it exists and that it's, you know, an actual problem. Uh, it can go a lot further uh, and you can, you know, recruit more people and have really engaging, great conversations that, you know, are positive on both ends for both people. Um, another big important thing here, like I said, when you have this information and you've done your background research, Sometimes people are going to ask you questions that you don't have the answers to. Uh, and that's totally okay to say that you don't know the answer to something. Um, we would much rather have that be the circumstance than for you to, you know, try to formulate some sort of answer uh, that may or may not be correct. Um, sometimes in these circumstances too, you can refer them to your local team coordinator if they're there, or maybe a more senior or uh, well-versed volunteer that would be more, uh, yeah, keen to answer these kinds of questions. But like I said, it's totally okay to not know everything. We would not expect you to know everything because none of us know everything. Um, and third, uh, to be friendly and enthusiastic. When you're out there and you're talking to these people, so often a smile brings people in and a great attitude brings people in. And once you have those people come over to talk to you, uh, 
the real win here is is just making the ask. Uh, just yeah, just saying, hey, uh, would you be interested in eventually tabling with us in the future or being more involved with our causes or would you like to learn more? Uh, Chelsea has always taught me that that is the true win in these circumstances. It's not getting them to say yes necessarily. It's just getting the ask out there with a smile on your face and genuine hope uh, for what we've got going on and drive an initiative. Um, what the people out there will expect from you uh, is a clear and concise message or what we'd like to call a hook. Uh, something that catches people's attention and keeps them listening about a campaign, petition, or action. For example, I would be like, at one of our tabling things, uh, hi, my name is Matt Ghost. I am the 350 Roaring Fork team coordinator, and today we are opposing fracking and trying to phase it out by 2030 in Colorado. Um, and then they might ask you why, and then you've you know, got them on board, you've informed them who you are, and sometimes why you're there and what you're doing. Um, yeah, and along with that, like I mentioned, uh, you just want to know some basic information about 350 Colorado and what we do. Things like how we are a non environmental nonprofit, uh, what initiatives we are gener generally trying to pursue, um, and yeah, just you know, a little a little background goes a long way. So that's kind of the expectations and respect section that we've got here, and I will pass it over to Chelsea again for a day in the life. Thank you again. So yeah, to kind of take everything that we have heard thus far and put it into a hypothetical example here um, with Rhonda. Rhonda has signed up to table for the first time with the Denver team at an outdoor community festival. And it's looking like it's gonna be a pretty nice day with a little bit of chance of rain. And it's a two hour shift, even though it's a, a four hour event. So coming in about midway in the day to help out and wrap up. It's gonna draw around a thousand people, the team has never been there before, so there's learning opportunities present. Taking a, a pause here, considering if you were Rhonda, what are some things that you would do to prepare? Let's take a slight pause. We've talked about good communication and prep and responding to situations. So one could say that for Rhonda, uh, on the day of, if she's waking up before 10 a.m., before the event starts, you know, checking to see has she been contacted by the team coordinator um, about any last minute changes. Checking the weather as well as that 40% chance of rain went up or down. Are there other elements now to consider? Looking through the confirmation details that were very likely sent by the team coordinator in advance that might talk about parking and what to bring and what to expect, you know, refreshing on those. And hopefully also looking through those tabling and outreach guidelines. If that hasn't happened yet, there's forms to be signed. And if an emergency were to happen, um, having that information for Rhonda's emergency contact would be really great. Yeah. Probably by 11 something, making way towards that 12 o'clock shift, getting there a little bit early, ideally, and being able to relieve whoever is there for a, a smooth transition. And once things have wrapped up at two, uh, having that time dedicated to help break down, take supplies back to the car, uh, really make sure everything is moving in the direction it needs to. And perhaps at the later in the day or the next day or the next week, there is some type of follow-up conversation initiated by Rhonda or the team coordinator to talk about how to go. Is it worth it? Should we do it again next time it comes back? That type of debrief is really critical in making sure that we're being strategic and putting our time in the best places. So we could come up with a boatload more of examples for you, but we just kind of want to walk you through uh, what it might look like, the actual mechanics of it. And that really gets us to our final wrap up point here, the final steps for takeoff. Um, we're you know, about to send you out into the world to ultimately strengthen the climate movement and make new connections. And just a few things to knock out, like reading through those tabling and outreach guidelines and signing the forms that are embedded within it. And once you've gotten that done, it's really time to just make it happen. Help at an upcoming opportunity, apply your skills, and, um, you know, there are a few ways that we do go about getting out the word about our opportunities, try to send out emails, post on social media, but the more proactive you are too, and maybe checking our website, our action dashboard, directly asking the local team coordinator or staff member 
um, about any upcoming opportunities and offering to help at them really does make things run more smoothly too. If you want to be contacted specifically to table, we can also make that happen. We have a, a list where we can keep that contact information and make that outreach when the time comes. And as another great tip, I would say that, um, you know, if you come across opportunities that we're not considering tabling at or we didn't know about, let us know. We would love to be able to consider making it happen. And if we can't, you know, we at least have a list to jot down uh, to consider the opportunity in the future. So your support and your proactiveness in that is really, really helpful and really appreciated. And lastly, if you feel like you need a little bit more information about 350 Colorado, uh, our, our campaigns, the issues here in the state, climate justice, you name it, uh, consider coming to volunteer orientation. I hold it on Zoom uh, and that registration link is linked right here in the slides for you. If we do not have one schedule, we do have a recorded version. So just reach out to volunteer at 350colorado.org for the recording. And that will hopefully just strengthen your foundation and information and confidence and ability to have a really good time while you're tabling. So as a final reminder to, as I said in the beginning, we're gonna be sending you these slides to review and click through the links. And just wanna give a huge shout out to the five local teams here in 2023 that are really moving this recruitment work forward in such an important way. Um, yeah, we really cannot build a strong movement without being out there in the community and connecting directly with people. We do have statewide campaigns and efforts as well in which we might be tabling. And if so, um, someone like the volunteer director, myself, would be the person to get in touch with to learn about that opportunity. So with that, uh, as the first one to say it, thank you so much for uh, walking the walk, the table and talk experience here with us. Uh, really appreciate you bringing your skills to this movement in this critical way. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming by, guys. Really appreciate your time. Good luck. Have fun, everybody. Thank you.